title of the, the paper or the, the presentation is Nada Yoga. Raga music is contemplative practice. Now, yoga we're all very familiar with. We hear about yoga all the time. But we'll get to the, a definition of yoga, which I would like to use for this paper, and which is kind of the, the ultimate classic definition of yoga given by Patanjali, who's the great you know, philosopher and uh, grammarian. And, well, he did a lot of things. But Nada Yoga specifically, Nada in, in Sanskrit means sound. And there is this tradition in India of, of analyzing sounds and words and all of these fundamental basic concepts in a much larger philosophical context, um, which we don't really have much time to get into yet. But um, I would be happy, again, to discuss these things further in more detail. And you know, my, my Sanskrit professor is here, Professor Sharp, and I'm sure he has a lot to, to add to all of that, <laughs> or maybe not. And Professor Wolf, as well, has done a lot of research on uh, the bhakti tradition and the effect that music can have on, on a religious experience, basically, and how it is a religious experience. So first, I'd like to look at the definition of what a raga is. We talk about Indian music as being raga music, at least classical music. And raga, it's, it's a huge, vast concept. It is very difficult to explain what a raga is. And the other day, I came into Professor Wolf's class and we, we talked a little bit about it. Actually, it was a couple hours. We, we chatted about raga and Indian music. And we were only able to touch the surface of it. But the, the wonderful, and I love this definition of raga, is given to you here. Raga is, <laughs> I'm just noticing some typos. You should, there should be a tilde over the N and a dot underneath the H for all of you Sanskritists out there just so we're clear about everything. So raga, this is given by Sarangadeva in the Sangeeta Ratnakara, which is a medieval text on music. Ranjayati um, iti raga. And very simply put, it says raga is something that colors. It doesn't say that raga is you know, X, Y, and Z notes. It doesn't say that raga is even related to music. I mean, a raga could be, I don't know, a paintbrush in this context. I mean, I don't know. All it says is the raga is something that should color. And in particular, they're talking about coloring the mind, coloring the consciousness, giving some flavor to you, giving some mood. And so the real essence of raga music is mood and, and coloring, feeling a color and, and a, um, some kind of presence you know, that's distinctive and unique. And so we have thousands of these ragas in Indian music. Each one has its own particular <coughs> coloration. You know, and even the same raga played on different days can be very different um, and can give different colors. But the bottom line point is anything that gives color and, and gives, sometimes people play ragas without their full heart and it has no real soul to it. And in that definition, it doesn't really turn out to be a raga because it's not doing any coloration. It's boring, it's insipid. You know, so even the most simple thing, like Bach to me is raga music in a way because he's coloring my mind. So this is the basic definition of raga that I want to start with, that it is something that colors. It's not even a musical definition right now. I mean, we'll talk about the musical aspects of raga at some later part, but for, for the time being, understand that the raga is all about this coloration. So next, I wanted to talk about the Natyasastra, is this very old text in Indian um, literature that kind of compiled all of this information about dramaturgy, about you know, how the drama stage should be put together, how music should be involved in that, how, you know, all of these things, instrumental music, the speech of the drama, all of this stuff was this, you know, put together into this wonderful kind of synthetic uh, masterpiece by Bharata. It was probably added to, as we know, in Indian literature, things were not just written by one author at one time. Um, we don't even know sometimes when the dates of these things are, but it's an old text and a very respected text. And in that, we also get a glimpse into what Indian aesthetics are like. How do, do does Indian how does the Indian mind view art, basically? And the way that we analyze art in India is through something called rasa. And rasa, again, now getting back rasa, is really means juice, like flavor, like the extract, like the, the essence of something. You know, like when you have nice mango juice, you know, it's, it's so flavorful and tasty. You know, that, that's what rasa is, it's, it's real taste. It's a palpable, essential kind of taste that you get out of something, like a nectar. And so, these Indian 
aesthetic principles, we have nine different rasas. You know, so there's a rasa for fear, there's a rasa for you know, love, there's the rasa of heroicism. So there's, there's nine of these. You know, there's not too much time to get into all of these definitions. But know that we have all of these different rasas that can interact. And you know, like particular ragas are known to evoke certain rasas and, and make you enjoy this kind of experience of bliss or happiness or joy or compassion or whatever it may be. The idea is that Indian aesthetics, be it in any art, music or dance or anything, is supposed to create an aesthetic experience that is palpable, flavorful, and something that, again, like the raga is, coloring your mind and making you experience something. Okay, so that's the basic idea of what raga is and, and what rasa is.